All right. Hello, Lias. Thanks so much for joining me. Hi. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's uh, kick it off. Would you like to share some information about your background and how Hopscotch got started? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so my name is Lias Thomas. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Hopscotch. And uh, Hopscotch is an open source API development platform. Uh, we basically help developers to uh, design APIs, test them, uh, monitor its health, even you know while uh, consuming those APIs, writing documents. And so it's basically an end-to-end -end suit for everything related to APIs. I started the, the initial project uh, back in 2019 uh, when I was working in another company in a full-time job. So it actually started as a personal tool uh, you know, something that I built for myself, you know, in the weekends, you know, that kind of stuff. But uh, later on, it, it kind of like grew uh, into this, this you know, entire uh, fleet for everything related to WPA. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's how it started. It was a personal side project for me. I love it. And, and a lot of, a lot of the stories are, are like this, you know, a personal problem of the founder. That's how most people got started. I love it. And I learned about Hopscots from my co-founder, Zaf, uh, picking it up to demo Algora. And so, you know, the value speaks for itself. Uh, how did you originally decide to open source uh, Hopscots? What, what went through your mind there? Uh, so, you know, Hopscots is essentially not the first ever, you know, such a tool that I, that I actually built for myself. Uh, I, I guess I have built somewhere around half a dozen of, uh, you know, such tiny, tiny little projects, uh, which were, you know, all of them were uh, kind of aid me to do the do the stuff I do. So I'm basically a front-end engineer. I used to be a front-end engineer. Uh, I made such tiny, tiny utilities. And uh, I had this thought. I had this habit of, you know, making all those projects open so, so that uh, at least some, you know, someone from the community or you know someone who had the same issue that I had can uh, maybe discover the project at some time, uh, maybe contribute to it and you know at least uh, you know make it useful for for the community. So that's 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 why it kind of had a kind of like a habit for me. That's why. And what did it look like early on? Uh, you know, attracting the first users and contributors. Uh, how did you launch it? Uh, yeah. So as soon as I had the first MVP of the project, I I wrote a blog about it on my uh on my you know the, we, we, I have I have been participating in a developer forum called Dev Dotu. So it's basically you know where developers hang out, they write blogs about their learnings, they basically you know share their updates, you know that kind of stuff. So I wrote a blog and uh, it kind of went viral. I I also remember posting it about. Uh, product and uh, also on Hacker News, so you know the the usual uh, places where we can you know promote your startups kind of thing. So the the usual way, but the blog post and I also did a tweet on my Twitter profile. These two things kind of went viral. Had uh, you know few thousand uh, initial users uh, landing on my uh, first MVP. So that's that's how it all started. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. And uh, where along the way did you start thinking about, you know, uh, potential monetization of the project and how the license comes into play and then maybe the team as well are growing it. So if you could walk us through. Yeah. So the initial, uh, you know, MVP of the project, uh, something that I personally made was back in 2019. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the blog post went viral. I, I were able to onboard, uh, you know, somewhere around 15,000 plus uh, users in the worst, in the first couple of weeks, like within the first two months, we had somewhere around 15,000 plus users using the very first MVP that I made in like a six hour window. So that was, that was actually the, the, the that point, like, why are we, I mean, why, why the hell the users are using this? Like, this is kind of like a tool that I build uh, in my free time after the working hours kind of thing. So that, that was the initial thought was going on but you know from 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 the early days onwards i thought the 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 hope coach budget could be a combined into individuals rather than teams or you know corporate so i put the entire focus on uh, individual developers first so that you know they can uh, they can figure out a better way to test apis they can share the uh, you know working progress apis with their teammates like 
I, I entirely put the focus on individuals first rather than, you know, making it available for teams or enterprises. But this is not an ideal way to, you know, uh, build a product. Like if you want to survive, if you want to, uh, you know, essentially uh, build the project with much more features, you know, enterprise grade features, you have to figure out a monetization plan. You, know, you have to basically stick a business model to the project. So the transition from, you know, being an open source project to a, you know, commercializable product is, is still in a working progress kind of thing. So at first, uh, I thought I would, I would just go with the, you know, plain sponsor me to enjoy this kind of features thing. Like I had a sponsorship, uh, you know, account in GitHub so that, uh, you know, those who want to enjoy the upgraded features they could have been, they could have, you know, sponsor me to work on the project. And it, it, it actually worked. I have been sponsored by you know, great personalities from around the world, like CEO of GitHub, even CEO of GitHub, and uh, a few other great personalities from Microsoft, uh, Google, and, you know, a lot of, lot of Fortune 15 companies started sponsoring me to, you know, work on the side project. And, uh, yeah, so that, that was the thing. Like, I was I able to, like, discover the, their existence, this, group of people who had the same issue that I had and they're you know even ready to pay for me to work on it full time and you know being work on an open source uh, project full time was kind of like a, a dream come true to me uh, back in 2019 so that's that's how and that's when I discovered that, that there could be a monetization strategy for this project wow. yeah I love it thanks so much for sharing uh, this information and so you know, from a side project to 15,000 people using it in two months and you getting pulled in that direction, you had to quit your job, I reckon. And so, you know, along the way with all that pull, how did you, how did you think about an approach sort of like, okay, I need, I need some help. Uh, maybe I need to secure some funding. Maybe I need to grow the team. How did you make decisions uh, along the way on this? Uh, so, you know, as of today, we have uh, more than 200 plus contributors from the community itself like uh on the you know entire you know we we, we had uh, i i remember this like we had more than 100 issues creating on a weekly basis for you know six to uh eight months straight on our daily days so a lot of engagement going on we are we are actually uh just close to fifteen thousand github stars on our uh you know main repository the web client and uh, you know a lot of engagement on the open source community as well so the the popularity i mean i i don't know whether if there is this you know any other project which gained this much of popularity uh in you know in this little uh time span so the the entire engagement happening on the open source aspect of the project was actually the 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 critical one thing which uh made me to realize that this this thing i mean Users want this thing. Like, I can't let it die. I can't let it, you know, become absolute after a while. And, uh, you know, figuring out the resources to build it was, I would say, relatively easy uh, than, you know, quitting your job. So, uh, I actually, I literally quit my job after one year into, you know, developing Hope's Coach in my free time. And uh, we raised a seed round of $3 million in 2021. Uh, you know, just this... Uh, one year into the development and uh, till then the, the the entire team of Hopscotch was just me and uh, my friend uh, who is also uh, the co-founder of the company later on was Andrew Bastin so he used to be a student back then he's still a student right now I was just graduated you know I studied computer science in college and just graduated and just uh, gotten into the first tech job and all so we were really early in the in the industry, but we had this confidence from uh, from the you know open source community. Um, they gave us the confidence to work on it full time. Yeah. Wow, I, I love it. I love it. Thanks, thanks for sharing. And in case it wasn't clear, we're talking about fifty thousand stars on the on the GitHub repo, right? Yes, five zero fifty thousand. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, that's 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 incredible. And so how are things looking like today? Could you share maybe some, some highlights or metrics that you're particularly proud of and maybe a next milestone? Uh, uh, so uh, in 2022, December, like two months back, 
uh, we literally crossed 1 million uh, all time active users like all users uh, so we actually have uh, two sets of users one is uh, basically those users who sign up to hopscotch or io uh, which is basically the cloud instance of hopscotch we also have a you know self hostable local instance in which uh, we essentially does not have any telemetry at place but again uh, you know we we do have the telemetry but it's completely optional so we crossed 1 million users on the cloud instance and uh, uh, on the open source aspect of the project i guess it's it's most probably the most i mean one among the most uh, popular repositories from asia pacific region 50000 gitops charts 200 plus contributors to the main repo that kind of thing. And uh, on a monthly average, uh, we are close to uh, 100,000 monthly active users as well. Oh, wow, phenomenal. <laughs> and uh, the, the team right now, you guys are all distributed? Uh, there's no office, right? Yeah. yeah, we are remote from day one onwards. I haven't met my uh, you know co-founder for the first one year of development. Like really? he, uh, yeah, So he basically flew to Canada to continue studies and out. I was in India. We together worked on the project for one year straight without even you know, seeing him in, in personal, even for one time. So yeah, we are still distributed. We are a team of 12 as of today. All of them are engineers. I still write code maybe you know four or five hours a day. And uh, yeah, all are remote mostly from India, but we do have few employees from uh, Bangladesh, uh, UK as well. Love it. I love it. Yeah. And uh, today, how's um, you, you already said, you know, for, for five, six hours a day, you know, you're writing code, working on product uh, outside of product development. What else is in your day to day life? If you could share what a day looks like. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, being a kind of like a solo founder for the initial days and, uh, you know, the entire uh, requirements for, you know, starting up a company, registering a legal entity. Uh, handling payrolls, a lot of documentation, accounting, bookkeeping. So I basically uh, work as a, I don't know, maybe uh, everything related to the project because I, I had this habit of, you know, doing everything myself for the, you know, for the initial days of the project for uh, essentially the growth and uh, survival of the project. So I still do a lot of things all by myself, but, uh, you know, trying to delegate a lot of stuff uh, as soon as possible so that I can, you know, actually concentrate on the sales and a uh, uh, few upcoming, uh, you know, projects that we have in our roadmap. So, yeah, if you think, so I'm, I'm basically the growth hacker, uh, the review, the full stack developer, the front end engineer, everything related to the project, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I mean, that's that's exactly what it looks like. And uh, and you're learning how to delegate uh, with, the, with the team growing. Yeah. So I, I had no prior experience on, you know, doing any of this, uh, previously, so everything linked all by myself. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, along the way, and maybe especially in the early days, were there some figures uh, within open source that you particularly looked up to, or maybe people you had conversations with that helped you navigate the waters? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, so I always had, you know, regular discussions with our general users. So, you know, as, as the project, uh, really got popular in the open source communities and, uh, you know, getting feedback from them are, you know, relatively easy than, you know, rather than being a proper disable because uh, if, if they come up with a bug, they are ready to open an issue on our GitHub repo, uh, which is the reason why we had, you know, hundreds of <laughs> issues. Of so, yeah, we, I, I always uh, kept the, you know, the, the channel for engagement with our end users often. And, uh, you know, as I said, most of them, uh, they were from uh, top, you know, Fortune 500 companies. Uh, they they were employees of GitHub, Google, again, you know, a lot of tech companies. So yeah, that I mean, no one particularly, but again, you know, a lot of employees from GitHub uh, were, were really inspiration to me as well. And so would you say that this this abundance of, of open issues and all this pool is also the main challenge in, in doing this and being the maintainer? Uh, would you highlight something else? Um, yeah. Actually, yeah. So, you know, uh, when when I go, go to sleep, it was like uh, 20 issues. 
and when i just woke up it would be 200 issues so that was the thing. <laughs> wow. and uh, so what i actually do is so uh, we were like a duo of you know engineering team like me and andrew he is basically in canada i'm in india and we had two opposite entirely opposite time zones as well so we we, we just uh, took it as a challenge like every issues opened on you know ist indian standard time zone i will be automatically reviewing i will be i will be the reviewer i mean we we set it to uh, work that way and everything uh, you know any issues or pull request opened uh, which is in you know canadian time zone and you will be the reviewer so which which is the reason why we had engagement and you know uh, the 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 ongoing development process throughout the day either me or him will be working on the project at any given time like it's it's you know any midnight or uh, noon any time someone will be working on the project or throughout the day so we tackled it that way uh, we had to you know differently opposite time zones uh, so that that again uh, was a challenge but you know i i would i would uh, i would agree that for almost all open source projects uh these differences in you know the communication with you know with your peers who might be from another continent who might be even who haven't you know you haven't seen them uh even at once in your lifetime so all this are, all this were challenges but you know we were able to uh, overcome most of them but yeah that's that's how we did it i love it i love it this is really this is really cool actually and uh what would you say is your biggest surprise you know something a few years ago you would say wow never imagine this would be the case i mean the whole project is phenomenal just if you could highlight something uh actually you know uh so we actually started as a uh, kind of like a uh hipster or kind of like a i don't know maybe a side project kind of thing like all our initial uis you know components they were they had like you know fluorescent neon green uh we yeah. had a we very rough uh, not polished ui and all and and all our users loved that like we were we were we were literally trying to come up with a much more standard uh, enterprise grade ui and all but all our existing users were compelling me to stay on that you know uh, that that uh, how do you call it like a hippie kind of thing but uh, again uh, we wanted to you know expand our users to all our world uh, we even did a rebranding on our project uh, back in 2021 so even after rebranding the project users you know still kept the support they you know uh, they were giving so yeah users users love you know all these fluorescent you know something that they haven't seen in any other project so that was kind of like a surprise for me That's really cool. That's awesome. And and I'm sure the character has uh you know stayed with the project that evolved. Um what what kind of things uh do you guys do to engage the community? Maybe some some tip on this front that you could give other other founders. Um yeah. Yeah, so we always try to uh you know engage with the with the community through uh any platform, any channels possible. uh in our really you know study from our really days onwards we had a lot of users from uh you know asia pacific regions like china india even from you know uh cities like singapore and all where they they actually rely on a lot of open source projects but their communication channels are you know kind of like restricted to few of like uh most of them preferred some uh you know tools which they only use within their countries uh for example telegram a uh, few of them were using slack but we can't expect a, i mean all of our users to use a single platform like as of today we have a uh, discord slack telegram even you know few more other instant messages so that everyone can reach to us and you know we we even communicate through emails to, to you know certain countries uh all over the world so you know having a uh, different communication channels are are really a benefit for open source project which can you know widespread uh, throughout the globe so yeah we we do uh, again uh, dedicate you know few hours every day to uh, tackle the issues and uh, obviously github is the most uh, engaged most prominent uh, communication channel in our in our entire you know fleet of products 
uh, they can you know open an issue uh, communicate on discussion tab so utilize all the mediums that's all <laughs> and uh, in terms of people you know new people coming in new contributors maybe they pick up a good first issue to people becoming a little more engaged and getting closer to the territory of, of maintainers are there any any lessons or tips to share in terms of that uh, sort of like evolution of the contributor community uh, so as I mentioned, uh, when I uh, started the project, we had a you know sponsorship type of thing. Like uh, mm -hmm. people used to sponsor me to uh, you know basically contribute to the project. Uh, so what I actually did is we evenly contributed the sponsorship uh, amount within our contributors. So if I get a thousand dollars on a monthly basis, I would you know contribute the same within the contributors who came on that particular month. Like if I had uh, 10 new contributors or, you know, 10 active contributors on the, on that very month, uh, I would have, you know, split the the entire sponsorship amount evenly through them. I would get 100, you know, everyone would get 100. And uh, that I, I use that as a, you know, uh, incentive to uh, those who are, you know, looking to contribute. But I actually kept it, uh, I, I haven't disclosed it to, uh, anyone else? I mean, those who only contributed the project know that this actually exists uh, within Hopscotch. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this this one little thing that we had in our project on our early days uh, was actually you know one uh, one thing which helped us to uh, gain a lot of contributors as well. Wow, good for you, sir! And thank you so much for sharing that. Actually, and it's the first time I hear something like this. <laughs> and and did you? Did you ask the community members to also use GitHub sponsor, and that's how you you managed it? Did you have to try something else? Because yeah, yeah. So when I uh, you know when I had the sponsorship uh, tires in place, uh, that was exactly the time when GitHub started to onboard users to their mm -hmm. GitHub sponsorship uh, program. So I I got an early invite, but you know a lot of countries uh, didn't had a uh, access to. Uh, GitHub sponsorship, you know, in our lady days. So what I actually did is I had uh, multiple providers, one in Patreon, uh, one as, you know, PayPal, like good good old play, PayPal button. So we we had multiple, you know, payment processors uh, back then, but uh, as soon as, you know, GitHub uh, gave access to GitHub sponsorship uh, throughout the countries, I, I, you know, I just took to uh, GitHub sponsorship as of today. That's, that's that's really cool. And again, I haven't heard you know this kind of story before, and I think a lot of people can take note here, not just as a way to engage, but also as a way to give back. And 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 yeah. thank you. Yeah, I mean, this is the entire idea behind you know having a, a sponsorship kind of thing within the open source project, and uh, you know being a you know most globally used developer platform. You know, as a GitHub, they can they can definitely do wonderful things and. Uh, uh, making sponsorship as a way to, you know, validate your idea, uh, maybe give it back to the community. Or, I mean, developers can do this kind of things. Like we can, you know, bring up, I mean, GitHub also has APIs to support this as well. Like you can maybe, uh, you know, give access to a certain set of features or the entire app to those who are only sponsoring you. Like you can do this with GitHub API. So yeah, I, I appreciate it. I mean, uh, and everyone to look into it, yeah. I love it. Today, are you guys uh, at all uh, experimenting further with this model or, or trying something else? Or was it just for the early days and it got to cumbersome later on? Or... Uh, so as of today, we don't, uh, you know, we we essentially removed the, uh, you know, sponsorship tires right. uh, back in 2021 when we raised them. Right. And yeah. we for everyone. Like, as of today, uh, you can uh, enjoy Hope's Coach, all of the features for free for everyone. We are still at pre-revenue stage. Uh, we are working towards building an enterprise addition to the, you know, Hope's Coach instance. So I would call uh, the current Hope's Coach instance as Hope's Coach Community Edition. We actually, uh, you know, had several features in the team collaborative space. Like you can now create collections that can be shared within a team. Uh, you can, you know, share environments, you know, that kind of stuff. So we hope to monetize a, a, a section within the app, which are, you know, mostly usable for enterprises and organizations. Like, you know, it will be mostly free for individuals, but uh, 
uh, for those who want to, uh, you know, enjoy a lot of features, uh, maybe, you know, custom authentication, like we, we have an exciting roadmap uh, for it as well. So we will be uh, working on this uh, enterprise grading systems of Hope's Coach, something they can, you know, in, uh, readily install on their premise with a great uh, subscription model. I mean, I believe this is the best time for us to experiment on what actually works and what does not. So, you know, taking the time to figure out what's, what's the best plan, what's the best way to uh, figure out the right business model for us. Yeah. That's that's phenomenal. And, uh, you know, surely everyone's excited for uh, for the rollout of the Enterprise Edition. Is there anything additional you could tell us here in terms of, you know, how you navigated the license or maybe the subscription model more specifically or how you go about prioritizing product development given the vast array of different users? Yeah. We actually have two roadmaps. One is the public facing roadmap. Yeah. We actually use GitHub issues and uh, discussions thread to, uh, and you know, with badges and tags to denote on which issues that we are working on, you know, as an internal team. But I'm pretty sure that the community and, uh, you know, those who are contributing to the opens are working on, you know, a set of another issues and features as well. But I'm, I'm, I'm uh, pretty sure they are working on uh, another set. But again, we have an internal roadmap as well in which we have prioritized a uh, lot of features which actually you know which essentially came from the community mm -hmm. uh, but you know we we want to do things in a better way so as the project grew uh, the complexity of features and you know the entire stack of uh, platform grew exponentially uh, which you know involved a lot of complexity so the a number of users who could contribute to the project uh you know in a in a quality way reduced which is you know actually a good thing considering the uh you know effect of project like we can't uh, as of today tolerate a major bug in the prediction we can't tolerate that because you know if if we do that there would be like at least you know thousands of users who will be facing that that particular issue so uh, as the as the complexity of the project grew uh, the core features are essentially came. I mean, they will they will come from the internal uh, roadmap, and uh, you know we we still give equal importance to the public roadmap, which has been you know entirely coined by the by the community itself. So equal importance to internal mm -hmm. and external. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, is there something you could share with us in terms of how you you know as a person as a founder sort of like manage your your psychology, your emotions, uh, what maybe works for you for in terms of productivity and just get a little bit of, of light into that personal aspect of the experience. Uh, <laughs> all right. I would say I'm a pretty lazy person considering the <laughs> efforts I put into track all the things that I've done. It's, it's very little. But what I actually do is, you know, everything related to the company and, you know, the, the work I do, we actually track them very well. So we rely on uh, GitHub projects and, you know, tools like Linear and all, which are, you know, uh, uh, really good uh, issue tracking systems. So we rely uh, a lot on uh, GitHub projects to track those issues. Uh, we, again, uh, uh, depend a lot on uh, the GitHub issues to, uh, you know, basically track and uh, navigate through the, uh, roadmap that we have so essentially i don't have a to-do list uh but as a company we have tasks and subtasks so that's that's how i you know uh, make sure that i have done everything uh for the company to run that's all uh, and that's basically your life right there i mean you know as, as a person how you experience it or oh, just github issues endless github issues <laughs> that's, that's it is an occupation and uh uh it's it's, it's essentially applies to everyone working in Hopscotch, not just me, but, you know, everyone who has been working in Hopscotch. So that's, that's how we do stuff as Hopscotch, yeah. Uh, to people getting started today, you know, releasing something to the world or to people closer to your position who have a growing open source project and maybe got some funding as well, is there some some lessons you might be able to share from along the way, some advice to other founders? Uh one thing I personally, uh, you know, discovered is that a lot of contributors, you know, a lot of uh, open source enthusiastic users, they they get started with a tiny idea. They work on it maybe for a week or a month, 
and after a while what they will do is they will they will let the project die by you know not contributing to anymore uh, making the dependencies outdated and you know basically uh, not caring as as it would have been a project so i would i would you know and encourage users i mean encourage open source uh, contributors to trust the process and uh, if if you believe if you think your idea is worthy pursue it a little bit more further so that it can be you know discovered by others and uh, uh, you know wait, wait for that viral moment because you know if 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 you don't what will action is if if you don't have that consistency what will actually happen is it will just die out and you know someone from uh, you know another part of the world will uh, have the same idea and they they big uh, business out of it so being consistent with the process is definitely a good thing for you know not just for me but for uh, everyone in the in the open source industry that's phenomenal advice thank you for sharing this and uh, as as you said before you make the bomb before you know people are knocking your door do your housekeeping keep it clean keep it updated have the documentation updated and trust the exactly. process and eventually exactly it, it, it takes time like the the room is not built in a day so your project will definitely take at least few more months maybe a year so trust the process that's all I love it. Thank you. Thanks so much. And this, this is an amazing highlight. Um, are there any closing remarks or perhaps you would like to just, you know, point people to come contribute? Uh <laughs> ah, definitely. So uh, we are all over GitHub. Uh, simply search for Hopscotch with two Ps. And uh, we have, uh, so Hopscotch is basically a, an entire, you know, platform. I mean, platform of multiple projects. We have a web client, which is the most popular uh, project from our uh, organization you know it has uh, more than 50,000 plus GitHub stars we have a CLI tool uh, which allows you to monitor you know API health in your CI/CD pipelines you can automate a lot of stuff within that CLI you have uh, proxy I mean we have proxy browser extensions like uh, many projects within the organization so uh, for those who want to contribute to the project do do contribute to any of the uh, you know repositories within our organization, and there's a global team that doesn't sleep. <laughs> We're gonna exactly. be there to, <laughs> to answer you. <laughs> I love it. This is perfect, Ligas. Thank you so much for doing this. I think a lot of this will benefit uh, people creating in the space. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to interview, and uh, it was it was great meeting you as well. Congratulations for the incredible, incredible. Uh, thank you, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>